Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habatithullah uh, from some of the benefits we gain in the holy month of Ramadan as we mentioned is reciting the Quran and contemplating on its meanings and so I thought it would be beneficial just to read a little bit of tafsir from Imam Sa'di uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah just a couple of, uh, a couple of the ayats, the, the beginning ayats of Surah Al-Baqarah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem Bada a'udhu billahi min shaytan al-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alif Lameen Thalika al-Kitab Allah rayba fi Hudin al-Muttaqeen Al-Ladina yu'minun bil-ghaybi wa yu'qimun al-salatu wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun Allah tabarak wa ta'ala Then says, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُ وَبِلَا أَخْرَةِ هُمْ يُؤْمِنُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُرِمْ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ مُفْلِحُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alif Lam Mim, this is the book about which there is no doubt. In it is a guidance for those who fear Allah. So we know the Quran is a guidance for mankind. And for those who, especially the muttaqin, so this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the sifat or the characteristics of the muttaqin, the pious ones. Who, uh, <clears throat> it is a guidance for those who fear Allah, who believe in the unseen, establish prayer, and spend out of what we have provided for them. So this is the ayah, that's why I wanted to mention it, because the ayah we talked about in the sittings of Ramadan, uh, and from what we have provided them, they spend. You know, this is that. That's a characteristic of the pious ones, of the the mu'minun. That's one of their their sifat. And who believes in the revelation sent down to you, and in what was sent before your time, and believe with certainty in the hereafter. Those are also characteristics of the believer that they believe in the hereafter. They believe in yom al and they believe in the Quran. They believe in the revelations that were sent to all the prophets, or the the prophets that were sent with revelations before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because that's from Iman it is they who are following guidance from their Lord and it is they who will prosper those are the ones who are following the guidance so the Shaykh uh, Imam al he mentions <coughs> he says we've discussed the Basmallah and he, he did this in when in his tafsir Surah al Fatiha uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim above with regards to the letters that appear at the beginning of some surahs, the most prudent approach is to refrain from discussing their meaning. Like Alif Lam Mim, we don't say that it means this or it means this. Some of the people try to explain it, but mostly they have no real evidence for their explanation of what it means. <clears throat> With regards to the letters that appear at the beginning of some surahs, the most prudent approach is to refrain from discussing their meaning without basing that on any shari'i uh, text because they don't have any text, nothing to support that it means this or it means this. Whilst being certain that Allah did not reveal them in vain. So they have a meaning, they do have a, a purpose. They weren't just there, uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's from his speech. <clears throat> Rather, there is wisdom behind that of which we are not aware. Okay? And then where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is the book that is... Uh, this great book is, uh, is, is the book in a true sense. It contains that which the previous books did not contain of great knowledge and clear truth. So there is no doubt. <clears throat> There's no doubt about it in any way, shape, or form. Saying that there is no doubt implies the opposite. The opposite of doubt is certainty. So that means we should have certainty in the book. So this book, this book contains certain knowledge that dispels doubt. This is a useful principle to note that when it is stated that something is not the case, that inevitably refers to the opposite. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is a book that has, contains no doubt, that means the, the opposite of that, of, of that statement is that it's a book of certainty. The meaning is the same, but it's said with a negative, okay? As it is based on certainty and guidance cannot be attained except on the basis of certainty. You can only get guidance with certainty, and that even for our, the Shahada, one of the conditions for the pillar 
pillars of the Shahada or the pillars of La ilaha illallah is certainty. That's one of the conditions of La ilaha illallah. Allah says, in it is guidance for those who fear Allah. Guidance is the means of being directed away from misguidance and doubt. It is the means of following the proper ways. Guidance is mentioned, but to what is not mentioned, Allah did not say guidance towards achieving such and such a purpose or to such and such a thing because he intended it to be general in meaning. It is guidance to that which is in people's best interest in both realms, meaning the dunya wal akhirah. So it is guidance for people in all matters, both fundamental and minor. It differentiates, differentiates between truth and falsehood, soundness from flawed, from that which is flawed, and it explains to them how to follow the path that will benefit them in this world and in the hereafter. Uh, so I just want to mention one last thing that uh, the Imam mentions. He says guidance is of two types. Guidance in the sense of being aware of the message and guidance in the sense of being helped to follow the message. The pious have been granted both types of guidance, whereas others have not been helped to follow the message. Being aware of the message without being helped to act upon it is not guidance in any real or complete sense. So he mentioned that there's two types of guidance. Guidance in the sense of being aware of the message so some people are guided, they know that this is the, the message, the message of the ha. And then there's the second type of guidance, and guidance in the sense of being helped to follow the message. So this is the first one uh, is guidance, uh, you know, a general guidance, and the second type is guidance to tawfiq, you know, hidayah to tawfiq, meaning that there is guidance that, uh, there is guidance to follow and practice Islam. Because when you think about it, Muslims are so, unfortunately, many of our brothers and sisters have so much misguidance. And when you are guided to the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, that is extra guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the inclination to even want to listen to a few ayats of the Quran, to have a sitting in Ramadan, that is guidance Tawfiq, that's tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is, means Allah wants good for you. The Prophet said, May yirad Allah bi khayrin yafaqo fi deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. The fact that you want to know more and that you have some understanding, things that you think is normal, other Muslims, it's not a big deal. I was just at a place getting my hair cut and, you know, the guy kept playing Indian music. Okay, he kept different, you know, different music for him, that's no big deal. Probably when I left, you know, maybe more things, you know, they're not benefiting from their fast. They have no customers, they could be reading Quran, they could be reading a hadith, they could be doing something that's beneficial, instead it's just spending wasted time. Also, other, another situation, I went to uh, a musallah today <clears throat> to do, you know, some of my research, just to break away from the office because there was so much cussing from the non-Muslims, they're cussing, talking about bad stuff, so I just wanted to get out of the environment and also I could focus. I went into the masala, made rakatain, sat down, but unfortunately one guy was sleeping, that's fine, he's sleeping, but I needed the light, turned the light. The other guy was listening to all kind of stuff and he was doing, you know, chat on the, you know, stuff. The message is not really a place for that. And I was thinking to myself, not thinking I'm better than him, no, but I was thinking that We've been blessed because our world is different. When I get a break, I might read something beneficial. You know, I also read the news, I also do other things, but you know, we're thinking about, I'm thinking about what I'm gonna do as a dars or, you know, things like this. That's tofiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Instead of just wasting time, you know, going to the masjid to actually have a chat, you know, with people on the, the camera. You know, not about the deen and stuff like this. So that tawfiq from Allah, that's what bin, uh, uh, Imam Sa'di, who's the shaykh, one of the main scholars of bin Uthaymin, Rahimahullah Jami'an, that's what he was mentioned about that kind of tawfiq, that there's a different, that's another type of guidance. And that's the guidance that the believer gets because they're busy, they have to be busy. If they're fitting those sifat, alif nam neem, dalik al kitab al arayma fi hudan al mutaqeen al adhini yu'minun bil ghayb, they believe in the ghayb. Wa yuqimun al salat, and they establish the prayer. Uh, and they spend from their chair, they spend from the money that they get. <clears throat> so those are all sifat of the mu'mineen, the pious ones, and 
that's uh, evidence that Allah has given them tawfiq, has given them, uh, you know, uh, success and successful guidance. And we ask Allah the Almighty to increase our guidance and bless us with ilm and nafi, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.